That is a big hook. Can I get it on camera? Yeah. That is incredible. Boom! Chesh Luja! What's up, people? Hola, Vigos Dad here. Welcome to another episode. Today, guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, I'm shooting this intro after I already shot the whole episode. I forgot when I did the beginning of it. Doesn't matter. Let's go with it. Five things I like about Polish people. According to French sociologist Emile Durkheim, he believes that human beings are essentially social beings. However, he does not believe that society is the sum of its individuals. He believes that societies are an entity in its own right. He argued that societies are more than the sum of its parts. We know there's all sorts of people, and usually generalization is not a good thing. But I believe that we can actually learn a lot by observing larger groups of individuals acting and reacting inside their cultural bubble. So today I'm going to tell you five things that I really like about Polish people as a whole. Number one, refusing to forget who they are. Cultural identity is the identity of belonging to a group. It's part of a person's self-conception and self-perception, and it's related to any kind of social group that has its own culture. I've been able to live in several countries after I married my Polish wife, so I've had my fair share of encounters with Poles living abroad, as well as the you know friends and family that we meet when we go back to Poland. And you know what? Let us exclude obvious things like second languages, accents, even political views. Let's stick strictly to cultural identity. I haven't met the first Polish person that doesn't love their Polish bread or that will not tell you things straight up just as they are. And I really, really like this because it shows you that Polish people are very connected to who they are, not just as individuals, but as a whole. At the end of the day, we are a walking representation or a walking advert for our own countries. And you know what? Polish people represent Poland very well. Doesn't matter where they are, they act like Polish people. Number two. They know what home is. I used to believe that Latinos were the pure definition of family-oriented people, and no one would even come close to us. The way we cherish the family nucleus and the respect that we show to our loved ones, I thought that those things would be unmatched, honestly speaking, until I met Polish people. In Poland, family is fundamental to people's lives. It makes them feel grounded. For example, Jadki are part of everyday life of their grandchildren. Extended family even plays a central role. Uncles and chochas are part of the daily life. I remember how I was almost immediately treated as a close member of the family by the grandparents, by the cousins, even with a language barrier. And all these things really make you feel at home, like you belong to something bigger. Sitting down together to share a meal, all those things are still very, very important in Polish culture. Family values are still upheld with the utmost importance. Older relatives are being taken care of by the family, and even though nursing homes and care facilities are increasing in use, if you know your parent or grandparents must live in one, it's expected for their children and grandchildren to take part of their daily life and to visit them often and make sure that they still feel that very close family connection. Number three, they are not entitled. There are just some people that it is such a drag to be around. They act like the world belongs to them and whatever doesn't belong to them should belong to them. Let's face it, we all know at least someone like that. And even though I don't think that there are any you know, big cultures or countries that as a whole act like this, <clears throat> America, I have actually found the opposite. A country whose people are collectively not entitled, not jaded, and pretty down to earth. And that country is called Rzeczpospolita Polska. No, no, it's not Rzeczpospolita, it's Rzeczpospolita Polska. The Republic of Poland. I really love the fact that Polish people are humble, they're not arrogant. As a matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. They will downplay their accomplishments. Cześć Kuba, gratuluję nowej pracy. Musisz być naprawdę dobry. Nah. It's very easy to be around them. If you need their help, they'll lend it to you in a heartbeat. Also, it doesn't matter if they have nice things or not. Very rarely they're gonna showcase those things, they're gonna show you, they're gonna talk about them. It's like as if they're almost ashamed to have those things. This is especially true with accomplishments like promotions, awards, good grades. Those things are the result of hard work, so there's no need to be celebrating too much. Just keep on working hard.
Number four, they are smart. Yeah, I know I'm generalizing a little bit, and I know that I'm also making a very big statement, but bear with me, I have some proof. Listen to this. According to the recent PISA survey, which is the Program for International Student Assessment, Polish teenagers perform well above average in the fields of reading, math, and science literacy. This was quite apparent for me from the very first time that I started interacting with Polish people. Their opinions are usually based on research or at least having read a lot about the topic that they are talking about. Even in my YouTube comment section, go take a look, there are comments and comments and threads and discussions and most of them are either research or intelligent or at least they have substance to it. I also believe that many of them are actually interested in deeper topics, be it humanities or tech or economics, doesn't matter. I very rarely had mundane conversations with a Pole about something as trivial as just the weather. They speak several languages besides Polish, German, Russian, English. They're humble and they're a little shy, so they always say, oh, I'm sorry that my English is not so good, but yet they're able to communicate perfectly fine. And don't you go thinking that this is just the younger generation because schools, they have language programs and all that. Even the older generation at least spoke two languages. Depending on which part of Poland they were from, they would speak Polish and German or Polish and Russian. That's a beautiful horse. That is a big ho Can I get it on camera? Yeah. That is incredible. He's not our biggest though. No? Where I come from, horses are not this big. Look how big. And number five, they are fighters. There's a saying that goes, there's nothing so good without something bad, and there's nothing so bad without something good. We all know about that feisty Polish temperament, right? Well, you didn't know? But this has some amazing positives. It makes for individuals that are extremely driven and that will push through almost everything. They are tenacious, they are gutsy, and they never quit. Well, you know, their ongoing pessimism might stop them from actually starting something, but hey. But once they start, they are not quitters. And this fighter characteristic comes out, especially and particularly when they're being forced to do things that they don't want to or they don't believe in. A great example of this is the Polish underground state. In 1939, after Hitler invaded Poland, the Poles laid out the foundation to what would become an all-encompassing, incredibly massive resistance movement called the Polish underground state. And like any state, it had its own government, administration, army, press, cultural movement, and all of this was being carried out in secret with the participation of millions of Poles. Imagine something like that. What type of society must be, what type of individuals this society must have, and what it says of their character that they can go through things like that and still come out at the other end strong as a unit and being able to proudly say that they are Polish. So to say that Polish people are fighters is an understatement and it's one of my favorite things about them. Boom! That's all guys, that's the end of the episode. I hope you liked it. To be honest, I've been meaning to do this episode for a while. I've had it on my list of topics that I wanted to cover, but I wanted to give it some time. I wanted to sink in. I wanted to be able to discover what were those things that I really like about Polish people. There are many more. I wanted to touch on ones that would even surprise me when I was digging through the things, you know? And having this channel, having you guys comment so much on, on, on the comment section, it helped me discover a lot about you. So I hope you liked it. Share this with a friend. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and see you next week.